Well, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll just wait a couple of seconds while people filter in. Uh, good to have some people joining us tonight on this um, APNA briefing. Um, good to be able to run across all, or run you through all of the different CPD options we've got at the Festival of Nursing. It's going to be a fantastic event. So really looking forward to having, uh, having everyone there and being able to sort of um, provide some really quality education, but then also have a bit of fun as well. So let's get into it. So I just wanted to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land on which we meet and pay respect to their elders past and present and emerging. Uh, so hello, good evening. My name's Mitch. I'm the general manager here at APNA and I'm joined by Suzanne. Feel free to introduce yourself, Suzanne. Hi, I'm Suzanne Blackaby. I'm the nurse education manager at APNA and I'll be with all of you at conference in Perth. Very excited. So a bit of an overview of how these APNA briefing events work. I'm not too sure how many people have been along to one of these, but we basically have a little bit of an agenda to start with. So um, first, a little bit of an overview of how to use the Zoom platform, um, followed by our spotlight topic, and that tonight is obviously our Festival of Nursing CPD. Then we'll take some questions, uh, and then we'll do a APNA membership overview. So great for those new members, but then also um, some existing members to get a bit of a refresher on what all the fantastic benefits are that you get as part of your membership. Uh, take some questions, and then we'll wrap up. So a little bit of an overview on Zoom. So if you'd like to ask a question, we're going to use the Q&A function tonight. So if you click on Q&A on your device um, and you'll be able to ask a question through there um, and then you'll also be able to see other people's questions and upvote those questions um, and we'll take as many of those questions as we can. We'll try and take them as they come in tonight as well. Um, so feel free to pop them in the Q&A feature. So let's jump on into it. So Festival of Nursing uh, is on in about six weeks time, which is really, really exciting. So the 27th to 29th um, of July in Perth. Um, and we are lucky enough to be able to have um, secured a whole heap of big names to come and provide their expertise and for you to come and have a listen to. So, you know, we've got the likes of Georgie Carroll, the nurse comedian. We've got Julie Leesk, uh, Karen Booth, our APNA president, is going to be there. Um, Narelle Williams from Asthma Council, Petrina Halloran from APRA, um, uh, Stephen Duns, the leadership expert, um, Hayley Ryan from Wounds Australia, um, Dr. Louise Shaper from the Australian Institute of Digital Health uh, and a whole range of other fantastic speakers. So you're going to be hearing um, from them at the festival. And tonight, um, Suzanne and I are going to give you a bit of an overview of, of, the, um, of the different education you'll be able to uh, see at the festival. So our second release early bird tickets are on sale right now um, and they finish up on Monday, the 26th of June. So you've got five days to jump in and grab an early bird ticket. So please jump in and do that. So we might just get ourselves started. So tonight we're going to go through the um, go through the program. Uh, this is a draft program. It is subject to change um, as we are sort of shoring up everything to make sure that we can provide the best possible experience. Um, but we're going to go through the program tonight. Feel free to pop your questions in the Q&A and we'll grab those as we go. Uh, but over to you, Suzanne. Uh, tell us about the Spirometry Masterclass. Yeah, well, we've had a bit of a lull in the respiratory space with the pandemic. We weren't doing spirometry in primary health care for quite some time, but it's on its way back. So for those of you who are new to the primary health care space and haven't done spirometry training before, this is perfect for you. For those who need a refresher, because um, it's been a while, um, also really good. And if you're aware of the Thoracic Society of Australia and New Zealand's new guidelines on spirometry training in community, it actually does ask you to do a full day of training and this um, masterclass uh, meets all of those criteria in the guidelines and it's presented by the National Asthma Council. It's going to be, um, yeah, a really, really good deep dive into spirometry. Fantastic. Um, that spirometry masterclass is actually valued at $620. So if you were to go and do it separately, um, that was what that one would be worth. So um, yeah. and tell us about the, uh, the nurse practitioner masterclass. The other thing with that spirometry one is that the National Asthma Council actually don't have um, recurrent funding for more of these training sessions as yet. We hope they do, but at the moment, this will be the last, um, coming up to the end of the financial year, the last full day training that they'll be putting on. Uh, the Nurse Practitioner Masterclass, it's been convened by Denise Lyons. She's a well-known nurse practitioner in primary health care, and um, she's also a board member of um, APNA. And 
this is to give nurse practitioners that extra um, CPD that they need around pathology and diagnostics and medicines. There's a whole heap of stuff being covered in this. It's a full day, identifying and managing neurocognitive disorders, skin check work, return to travel, so around travel health and immunisation, heart failure, pharmacology, that one's being um, presented by a really interesting pharmacist who works in a multidisciplinary team in primary healthcare. So she's actually works with the nurses and nurse practitioners and the GPs. It's, she's great. Um, some contraceptive stuff on all the different ranges of um, contraceptive devices and um, insertions and the practical know-how about that. And the really exciting piece at the end of this day is we're going to be hearing from Francis Downey from the Department of Health and Brett Horner around the new Western Australia pilot program for nurse practitioners. And that could well be setting the, setting the benchmark for what we see in the NP space around the country. So we're really keen to hear about that one. And then we've got the PHN Forum Day, Mitch. Yeah, so the PHN Forum Day, it's a, a, a whole day for PHN staff to come together to network and to learn and share ideas. So um, it's a real good, really good day for that sort of cross collaboration across PHNs. Um, so that'll be a fantastic uh, masterclass and PHN Forum um, there. And then the skin cancer. Yeah, so you know APNA, we don't wait to be asked. We drag our chair to the table and we move forward really fast. So skin cancer um, medical practice is expanding in the nurse space. This um, session's delivered in the morning and the afternoon, so you can choose one or the other. And it's delivered by Health Cert. Now Health Cert do all of the um, medical officer training throughout Australia and um, the South Pacific um, around skin cancer um, practicals. So this is, uh, they're expanding their offerings into the nurse space, which is fantastic for nurses who want to grow their scope of practice. So they're going to be looking at demoscopy, punch biopsy, shave excision, suturing, local anaesthetic. They're going to have expert surgical assistants there with you. The pork belly's on its way to get in the fridge for you to have a go at yourself. So um, it's really exciting to see this broadening of scope of practice. And, and it's a really good taster for nurses who want to see what they can do um, um, in the skin cancer space. Somebody loving the pork belly got a love heart from that one. So there you go. That's a, a fantastic practical um, workshop as well. So that that's one's going to be fantastic. And that one, if you were to do that um, alone, um, is worth over $550, just that one alone. Um, tell me about the occupational violence and aggression training, Susan. Look, part of me, Mitch, wishes we didn't have to do this, um, but we do. Uh, we actually heard um, a bit from our nurses at our roadshow events last year when we presented um, some information um, around what you could do to, you know, de-escalate situations in primary healthcare. You know, primary healthcare nurses um, and nurses generally, they are often alone, work in small teams or in isolated areas of the facility that they work in. So unfortunately, occupational violence and aggression is real in healthcare settings. Um, so we really want to provide nurses with um, some tools uh, to use if they find themselves in these situations. And also just to be able to identify the signs of things getting out of hand early and minimise that risk. So it's been presented by um, Resolution Education, who are experts in, um, in their field, and they uh, yeah, do a lot of work for our state health departments um, in this space. So that's yeah. a part one and part two, you can do the morning session or the afternoon session there. Yeah, and that one's, that one's valued at nearly $500. So um, fantastic to come and be able to do that as part of the festival. Um, tell us about the Chronic Disease Management Masterclass. Yeah, look, um, you know, chronic disease management is such a huge part of everybody's healthcare experience these days um, for all clinicians. And this is a bit of a deep dive. Um, it's a bit longer than the sessions we were able to present at the roadshow, um, the, the roadshow events last year. And we're looking to really get that theory stuff on board and then turn it into practical application. Um, looking at the MBS, making the most of what's there, looking at comprehensive assessments, care planning, team care arrangements. It's going to be some breakout sessions in that as well to really hone your skills. So that's been presented by the, um, by the APNA Building Nurse Capacity and Chronic Disease Management Healthy Ageing Team. Yeah, fantastic. And then basic life support. Yep, we all have to do it, right? 
we all should be doing our basic life support and defib and all of that sort of stuff every year or so. Um, but we wanted to go one step further with this, okay? So we're going to be doing the CPR and the defib, but we're also going to do some scenario um, work around those common medical emergencies that you see, um, you know, walk through your door in your clinic or your community health centre. So we're looking at um, the systemic assessment of the unwell patient, stroke, um, AMIs, and anaphylaxis in both adults and paediatrics. So it's a really well-rounded session. Yeah, fantastic. So that one's that one's valued alone at about $400 as well. So that's fantastic um, that it can be part of the festival. Um, tell us about nurse clinics. Oh, look, nurse clinics uh, have been a space that ATMA has supported for quite some time. And what we're looking at with these sessions is really to expand um, nurses' knowledge on how they can do it where they work. So um, it's... This one's been presented by the Building Nurse Capacity Team, and it's around developing those innovative models of care and nurse-led clinic models of care. But it's also about co-design and roles that, you, the way you can optimise your role as a nurse in all these different settings, applying the building blocks, identifying population needs and gaps, securing funding, addressing the challenges. We've had a team working around this project for a couple of years now. We're also going to have some of our successful um, clinics in the nurse lead clinic space come and tell you about how they did it where they work. And then end of life. Yeah, look, you know, this is a really important one for um, not or for nurses in the aged care space, but also, um, you know, it doesn't matter where you work in health, you will come across patients who um, have life limiting conditions or be involved in end of life care. Um, this one's being presented by um, the palliative care team at Cancer Council WA, and it's a really interactive session. So there's paid actor coming in and going to be doing some scenarios and, um, and some practice at having those difficult conversations and really recognising those emotional cues in people who you interact with interact with we've seen people on their worst days quite often as nurses um, and how we approach those situations is really important nice one and finally the last masterclass which is custodial health nursing yeah so hey and kind of niche area in, in healthcare is um, working in the, in the justice system. So this session's been led by some amazing nurses and nurse practitioners who work in custodial health. We're really looking at um, giving nurses an insight to what it's like to work in a prison or justice health um, you know, facility. Um, and expand what it looks like to expand your clinical scope in those areas. And for those nurses already working in justice and custodial health, it's going to give you um, some more information around identifying education and credentialing pathways to, to really um, practice and do whatever you can um, to help bring primary health care to the people that you're looking after. We're going to be looking at substance misuse, um, identification of withdrawals. We're going to be looking at um, what it's like to start and progress your career in custodial nursing, um, assessing people for post-release um, and, and linking up with their healthcare provider so that they get all the information that they need. Reflecting on deaths in custody, you know, it's unfortunately, as the numbers are way too high. What can, what can nurses do in that space? And looking at the um, coronial in ca um, cases involving Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, um, in uh, the custodial setting as well. So, you know, some, some pretty hard hitting topics in there to cover. Fantastic. So that's all of the masterclasses. So you can choose to uh, either do one of the full day masterclasses or you can choose to do uh, two of the half day masterclasses. So choose morning, afternoon, whichever way you want to do that. Um, if you've already purchased your festival ticket, uh, you can jump back into the system and book in. So there is caps on a lot of these. Uh, obviously, there's only so much pork belly that you can get. So um, there's caps on a lot of these different for the room size, but then also um, a lot of the equipment and the group sizes. So please jump in and um, go ahead and book into the master classes or master class that you'd like to do uh, and to make sure that you don't miss out on your spot. And if you're if you hear yet to to book your ticket, um, you can book into your masterclass um, as you're doing uh, your tickets as well. So then we jump into some speed presentations. So what we're doing at the festival is a bit different to what we've ever done before. Uh, we want to have as much 
um, must much and the amount the must the most amount of education possible and the ability for you to hear as much education as you can. So during those breaks, so during that afternoon tea, for example, here on the first day, um, we have in our what we're calling our festival hall, which is where our big plenaries are and our expo space. Uh, we have these speed presentations that happen during the uh, during the break times. So uh, on the Thursday, the we've also we've got a, a one on managing incontinence. We've got an NDSS update, and then we've got two others which are still um, confirming those topics. But those uh, happen in the festival hall, and they happen um, while the breaks are on. And you can listen in with with uh, with headphones. Um, so it, it's going to be a really interesting um, experience and and something a little bit different, which we think is going to be fantastic. To, to provide a whole heap of different education across different spaces. So those speed presentations uh, go for 15 minutes each um, and you'll be able to see, see their presentation up on the big screen. Uh, you'll be able to listen to them um, along in the room as well. So that's fantastic. Then we're moving on to Friday. So Friday, the 28th of July, and we've got a couple of breakfasts. We've got three breakfast sessions to kick us off. So we have a pneumococcal, meningococcal and COVID-19 immunisation update. Uh, we've also got a, a session from Sanofi. Uh, and then we also have a really interesting session uh, so that you can have your say on the future of nursing CPD. So that is going to be run by the APNA Scoping Project. And here at APNA, we are looking uh, at at working out what uh, the future of CPD looks like. And we're, we're, we're um, going to be doing a bit of focus group kind of activity. Uh, and so you can help us help influence, well, what does that future look like? And what's the technology that APNA needs to get to help, you know, underpin all of that. So uh, it's going to be really fantastic. There's the, op there's the option to attend this sort of one hour session, uh, or there's some other sessions you'll see through the program, uh, which are sort of smaller focus group sort of sessions. But um, there'll be more information on those ones. So uh, tell us about the, the first plenary on the on the Friday morning. Suzanne. Yeah, so I'm um, kicking off the first plenary, of course, we'll have Georgie Carroll. Um, and if you don't know who she is, please YouTube Georgie Carroll. Um, as she will definitely give you a laugh. Um, Karen Booth, the APNA president, will be speaking. And we have um, the presentation of uh, the Nurse Awards for, for this year, the President's Award and the Rosemary Bryan Award. And we'll be hearing from Sarah Brown. She's the CEO of Purple House, um, which is an amazing initiative um, bringing dialysis to some of Australia most remote communities and also Julie Lees. Um, Julie Lees does a lot of work in the immunisation space, particularly around vaccine hesitancy. She's presented for, for APNA quite a bit before, um, so we're really, really happy to have her along in that first plenary. Fantastic. And then we jump into four more speed presentations. So um, Digital Healthy Aging Guide. Uh, we've got something on the transition to professional practice. We've got nurses are the quality care team members uh, me uh, members for chronic disease, um, chronic kidney disease, excuse me. And then we've got something on lung learning. And then we jump back in to some concurrent sessions. Yeah, so the first one um, is presented by um, Ben from NCIS. You know, NCIS is a leading authority in the country around immunisation. So this is an um, immunisation update. Now, this is fantastic for nurses who are authorised nurse immunisers or IPNs if you're in Queensland, but also for any nurses, registered nurses or enrolled nurses. If you're giving immunisations, this is a session for you. We're going to look at the NIP. We're going to look at new developments in vaccines. We're going to look at recent changes and what we can expect in the medium um, in the medium term the back half of this year and in 2024. And then um, Aboriginal health assessments. Yeah, okay. I did not know this, but there's 89,000 um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in WA alone, and only about 27% 20 of those get their Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health assessment. You know, wow. that's a number that we really need to turn around. Yeah, I know, but there's a worse number. The follow-up um, the follow-ups that you can do after following an Aboriginal health or uh, Torres Strait Islander health assessment, those nurse items that you can you can do to help progress people and give them better chronic disease management, only 1.47% of the allocations being used. Yeah, that's not so great. it's not great. So there's obviously some barriers here. So there's this session's around what those barriers are and what we can do as nurses to minimise those barriers and increase the work that we can do to, to help Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander First Nations people improve their health outcomes. Yeah, wow. Uh, and then sepsis. Yeah, sepsis. Some, uh, you know, everyone, we all know the word sepsis, right? You know, someone's septic, it's like, you know, panic stations. 
But I did not know. This is what this is what you get when you do a deep dive into you know people's research and abstracts. It's fantastic. Um, it costs Australia four point eight billion dollars annually, with direct hospital costs accounting for seven hundred million per year. Eighteen thousand Australians are affected by sepsis a year. That's staggering. Anyway, so pretty much you can see sepsis in all sorts of healthcare settings. Now, this session is um, built around a pathway that was um, designed for the um, custodial justice health setting, but it can be applied anywhere. So they're basically giving us their great ideas and telling us how we can use them in our practice so we assess and treat sepsis early. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and then palliative and end of life care. Yeah, this session's really drilling down onto um, what people want in the, um, when, when they are being palliated and um, the vast majority these days people want to be looked after in their own home. Um, and there's, you know, can be some barriers to that, particularly in states like WA, South Australia, Northern Territory, Queensland, they're big areas, there's a whole geography thing there to and workforce issues. So this is going to look at what can the generalist nurse do in that space with those patients and what should they be referring on to specialist services and, and, and how can we bridge the gap in between those. Um, and this is being presented by Cancer Council WA. Yeah, fantastic. So that's our first bank of concurrent sessions. Um, so obviously you, you need to choose which one of those you'd like to go to. Uh, and then wounds, Suzanne, could, wouldn't be an apnea, apnea event without talking about wounds. I know, and we've pushed as much wound content into this program as we possibly can, from master classes to concurrent sessions to speed presentations. So we hope um, we hope we've ticked all the boxes. This session is um, going to drill down on um, on wound care and the aged care person, particularly you know those chronic wounds, those um, skin tears, those lower leg wounds. Now the wounds um, sessions throughout um, Friday and Saturday have been presented by Hayley Ryan. She's the chair of Wounds Australia and a brilliant presenter. If you were lucky enough to see her at any of our roadshow events last year or any of the events she's done for Smith and Nebu and some of the other wound care companies, she's great. So this one's really going to look at um, the aged care space assessment, classification, treatment, update you on the latest innovations, research and recommendations for, for aged care. But it's not just for aged care nurses. It definitely is a space for aged care nurses to be. But, you know, in general practice and community health, we're all seeing patients who are getting older. So, yeah, this is going to be a great session. And then there's a nurse practitioners panel. Yep, so this is by popular demand, Mitch. Nurses told us they want to know a little bit more about advanced practice nursing and nurse practitioner um, credentialing, what drives you to get there, how you get there, what the education requirements are. And, you know, and don't forget there's been those really recent changes um, uh, to the collaborative arrangements um, for nurse practitioners. So we're going to cover off on all of that. We'll have Denise Lyons with us on that panel. She's a nurse practitioner in primary care. We're going to have Brandy Cole. She's um, uh, one of the leads in the nurse practitioner course at the University of Newcastle. She's coming over. And we'll have Karen Booth there as well. Um, she's been sitting on the um, nurse practitioner um, government task force, uh, um, the 10 year plan. So she's going to give us the latest goss on that one as well. Fantastic. And then empowering nurses and patients with uh, immediate access to their care plans. This is neat. This is, a, you know, the medic alert bracelets and yep. ID things that people can have and the buttons yep. they can press in their hands, all that kind of stuff. So this is next level. So this is a unique um, digital design where we're going to have a look at how it actually works. We're going to bring it up on the big screen, but essentially you can have an app on your phone, you can scan someone's Medi Alert, and you can pull up a whole heap of information, including advanced care plans, including allergies, including all the stuff you'd normally think, but also stuff like their chronic disease management plans. Ha! We love a gadget that can do that because at the moment, there isn't one. So, um, yeah, really excited to see this in action. I haven't seen it in action yet, but it's um, really interesting. Fantastic. Tell me about lifestyle as medicine. I'm actually really interested in this. I saw this in the program. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. So I think I'll be in that session, but tell me more. Yeah, look, there's plenty of fans of Kim Poynier out there. Um, Kim's a great present a presenter. She's an expert health coach and she loves teaching um, nurses what she knows so we can take it away and do it in our practice. So, you know, there's a whole heap of government priority areas around these lifestyle modification questions. Um, we know what 
you know, we know what lifestyle modification is. We know that's where we need to be and that's what we need to educate patients on so they can make change in their lives and do good preventative health and lower their risks of chronic disease. But then there's the how do you get from here to here? And that's what Kim's going to give to us. She's going to really look at um, the way nurses can make those changes and support their patients to make changes. She's going to look at ways we can do that with um, things like the quality improvement PIP, government funded initiatives, telehealth, Medicare item numbers, and innovative models of care. No matter how much we want to do the education and guide our patients in lifestyle choices, we know that if we can't make that an, ec an economically viable step, um, it, it's hard to get some longevity in our practice and get support from practice management to do that. So, yeah, looking forward to hearing Kim. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Well, definitely be in that session. So then we come into lunch on uh, on Friday. So we've got some pre um, some more speed presentations here. So digital health workforce in the primary health uh, primary care sector. Uh, we've got healthy aging clinic um, building nurse capacity, uh, which is Jane Bolan, which will be fantastic. Um, then a really interesting one about taking the abstract out of abstract writing, which is actually fascinating. Um, I think it's going to be a really interesting one there because you know everyone's got great ideas um, and. You know, we want it. We we ask for as many people with their great ideas, and we've had so many sort of come in. But um, I suppose this is talking sort of trying to take the mystique a little bit out of you know abstract writing, and so that any anyone can do it. Um, so then a piece on grief meets poetry. It's going to be a really interesting piece there by uh, Atma's own Dr. Danny Hiltz, uh, and then a, a sec section on CIS, which is the Child Information Sharing Scheme. Um, also having one on health response to climate change, which is going to be really fascinating as well. So that's the Climate Action Nurses and then Medicare Alert Care Clinics, um, which will be really interesting as well. And then after lunch, we jump into another set of concurrent. So um, talk to me about how can primary health care nurses become more comfortable with the unexpected, Suzanne? Yeah, this is um, this is a really innovative presentation. So um, Julie Johnson that's presenting this he, um, works at the Australian Australasian College of Paramedicine. She's a paramedic herself. Um, and she's really keen to have um, nurses in, in primary health care and other healthcare facilities respond to emergency situations in the best possible frame of mind that they can so they can make clear decisions. Now, we um, had, uh, this, had a similar presentation by Julie um, in one of our programs programs and the um, evaluation after that was off the charts um, and so we were really excited when um, when she uh, popped in an abstract for our conference. So she's going to look at the health and disaster risk management framework and how that works and her goal is to improve our working memory and crucial functioning in emergency situations and unpredictable environments. So she really wants us to have a real world scenario approach to what happens um, you know every day. It can happen every day. Fantastic. Um, and then asthma. Yeah, look, you know, a huge part of, um, of what we do in um, the res in respiratory space is, is asthma management, asthma um, action plans for kids and adults. So this is a really comprehensive um, session around supporting um, nurses to give great education to their patients with asthma, device use monitoring, how to do it, what to say, um, a touch on spirometry, um, symptom control monitoring. Um, and it's all based on the most recent and up-to-date um, asthma guidelines handbook. So, yeah. Fantastic. And then tell us about this next one, the patient reported measures and nurse-led patient-centered care. Okay, so this is where research meets reality, right? So the Agency for Clinical Innovation in New South Wales has been doing this really big project around embracing patient-centred care by incorporating patient-reported measures. So that's a lot of words. What does it mean? So basically, they've got some real insights now into what patients think and how they measure the care that they receive, their experiences, their goals and their health outcomes. So, you know, it's it's really putting research into practice. So they actually um, did a collaboration with Hills Family Gen um, General Practice and actually used the research to change workflows in the practice, to get stronger therapeutic relationships, to streamline goal setting, um, to actually measure outcomes and goals of, of what we do in um, preventative care, chronic disease management and those complex patients. 
Fantastic. And then into our first two-parter. So mental health first aid, part one uh, before the afternoon tea break and part two after the afternoon tea break. Um, tell us about this one. Okay. This is pretty exciting. This is pretty big. So um, APNA will be launching a mental health first aid. And this is the first um, glimpse into that program. So this is something that we're hoping to roll out um, more widely in the future. Um, and this is the, the first step into that. So mental health first aid, um, this particular course is around engaging leaders. So this is designed to educate leaders, decision makers, influencers about mental health first aid in the workplace. Um, supporting people who may be facing mental health problems, recognising the signs of mental health issues and stress. Um, yeah, we're really excited to bring this to conference. It's taken the team a lot of work to get there, um, but it's going to stand us in good stead for the future. Yeah, definitely. So then we have some speed presentations uh, in the afternoon tea. So there's a Smith and Nephew presentation. Um, there is a piece about school nurses uh, in there, which is fantastic. There's um, a piece about custodial health nursing and something from WA Country Health Service um, around country kids, which is fantastic. And then back into some more wounds, Suzanne. Yeah, slightly different takes. So this is going to be wound assessment and diagnosis. So this is about comprehensive wound assessment principles, examination techniques, documenting what you find when you do assess a wound um, and data collecting. Pro data collecting on the progress of wounds, what we should be doing. You know, you don't always get to do the same patient stressing a few times in a row, staff move around and change. So, um, you know, clearly identifying what we're doing is important and progression of, of wound healing is important. Um, so there'll be a lot of, you know, techniques, tools for your toolbox in this one. And again, that's presented by Hayley from Winds Australia. Fantastic. And then intellectual disability and or autism. Yeah, all right. So 10% of Australia's population have a disability. So 10% of Australia's unwell population, mm. or maybe more, have a disability. Yeah. There's not a lot of emphasis on um, educating undergraduate nurses around the um, nuances of communicating and caring for people with intellectual disability in our healthcare system. We can, we as a country, we can't have a separate healthcare system and we don't want one um, for people with disability. We want people to get the best care from the best clinicians um, where we all do. But we need to be able to um, link um, people to the right care. We need to be able to communicate effectively. So this session is around those principles, um, around how we can kind of move those numbers. You know, people with disability are proportionately present more often to healthcare, um, and to healthcare facilities and have healthcare problems and often diagnosed later because of masking. Um, so this is gonna have a look at all of those issues and also um, give nurses access to a free education course around this called Every Nurse's Business, which is really, really good. I've done it, did it a couple of years, a uh, year or so ago. Um, and yeah, I learnt some stuff, definitely. How interesting. Um, then we get into leadership with Dr. Stephen Duns. Yeah, we've got Stephen with us for a couple of presentations through the program. Um, Stephen did, uh, uh, he's a leadership expert, and he did some great presentations on the roadshow um, at, at a few of our different events, and um, nurses wanted to hear more from him. So that's brilliant that he's coming back and joining us at our national conference. Yeah. So this one, Leadership Without Authority, is around building trust and rapport, personal branding, building coalitions and alliances, um, and influencing others and doing it in a way that's professional. Fantastic. Um, yeah, leadership, he, Stephen Dunn's really, he got a, um, some really good feedback from the Roadshow last year, so it'd be great to have him back. Uh, so that rounds out our uh, sort of education for uh, the Friday, for Friday the, uh, the 26th, which is fantastic. Um, then we have a special guest presentation. Uh, I'm not going to let slip on exactly what that is, but we have something pretty special organised uh, and then straight off into the festival party. So that um, that's going to be fantastic. Uh, so that will be lots and lots of fun. And then jumping into Saturday the 29th um, and we have a session with MSD uh, and then we have a Pfizer breakfast session as well. And we've got two other breakfast sessions in there, uh, which we're just confirming at the moment, um, followed by the Saturday AM plenary. Yep, we'll have Georgie back with us for the plenary um, and we'll be hearing from Ken Griffin, our CEO, 
And we'll also be hearing from Tracy Johnson. Those of you in um, WA may know her. She's the CEO of Inla Primary Healthcare, amazing speaker quite funny as well. So yeah, she's great. Um, and also Louise, uh, Louise Schraper, she's the CEO of the Australasian Institute for Digital Health. Now something that happened during the pandemic that didn't get a lot of airtime because we're in the middle of a pandemic was the National um, Nursing, Midwifery, Nursing and Midwifery Digital Health Capability Framework was released. Now this framework is actually guiding what's happening in the digital health space across all aspects of nursing and midwifery. Um, so we're going to hear a little bit about that in that session. Fantastic. And then we jump into some speed presentations. So Stephen Duns is there to be speaking about expert to leader. Uh, then we have a piece around uh, bringing peace of mind to loved ones and caregivers, which would be great. Uh, Beyond the C, primary healthcare nurses supporting hepatitis C elimination. And then after hours, primary healthcare, uh, which would be really fantastic and interesting there as well. And then into uh, our double header, our double parter, uh, wounds session on the uh, on Saturday the 29th, uh, just after morning tea. I promised lots of um, as much wounds as we could get into the program as we could fit. So um, this session, yeah, is in two parts with a little break in the middle, um, but it's going to look at selection of appropriate wound dressings, compression therapy and principles, assessing and monitoring the effectiveness of compression and the dressings that you're using. Um, a, really informative, um, informative session. You know, if 10, 12 years ago, we weren't really thinking of compression um, as a generalist, nurse generalist thing that we that we did. Um, now we know it's best practice for, for, for many chronic wounds, but we also know that, um, you know, assessing um, the suitability of a patient's um, arterial and vascular systems for compression is really super important important we don't want to do more damage than good so um yeah this one's um yeah going to be a bit of a deep dive into all things um compression and wind, wind dressing selection fantastic and then an mba so patrina halloran yeah you know this um this session um we we sort of started thinking about a lot of the questions that we get on the nurse support line mitch um mm. and overwhelmingly you know we, we actually atma's really data driven those that have been around APNA for a while will know that um, and we collect data around um, what are the most common questions nurses are asking us um, across a range of channels but including the nurse support line um, so what we want to do in this session is we've got Petrina from the nursing and midwifery board up are coming along um, really having a look at um, what the role of the NMBA um, and the role of APRA in nursing governance but looking at topics like audits notification processes delegation and supervision some of that tricky stuff that's actually got some fairly concrete guidelines around it and we're just going to break that down a bit um, and, and have a closer look at it. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, and then we've got a gap in there. Tell us a bit more about our special gap in the middle there. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're just locking that one in, um, but hopefully we'll be able to update that in a couple of days. But we're going to have um, a presentation around dementia care and some really innovative research in that session. Fantastic. And then uh, nurse trans nurse nurses transforming digital health. Yeah, ideas to action, huh? So, um, Atna has been working in a project um, in, in the digital health space um, for a while and championed a whole bunch of nurse transformers. Almost sounds like an action movie, but uh, they're, pre they're a pretty pumped up bunch. So, you know, you never quite know what you get. But the nurse, um, the nurse transformers really acted as educators, early adopters of digital technology. They were change enablers. They shared their knowledge about emerging trends in the digital space um, with other nurses and encouraged them to get on board. Um, so this is really um, an, an engaging session and I'm going to pass on some learnings um, from those nurse transformers right to you. And then the next one, um, positive child mental health. How interesting. Yeah, I, another one, when I got in, when I dove into the detail, I found some startling numbers. I mean, we're, I think we're all pretty aware that, um, you know, we've had increasing mental health um, occurrences, particularly in our younger populations um, through the pandemic. And we've seen a bit of a spike in those age groups. Um, we're, I guess we've seen a spike across all age groups, but more so in the younger population. So it, uh, the numbers that are sitting around that is one in seven um, children experience psychological distress. One in seven. And you think about how many kids live in your street. Yeah. That's a whole bunch of kids, right? A lot. Yeah. And the thing that nurses um, can do in this space is nurses are really trusted. Nurses interact with children and families 
all the time. Yeah. So we have an expert, we have Anya from Emerging Minds, amazing organisation that do a whole heap of education in this space. She recognises that nurses are very well positioned to support children and families cope with this stuff. Um, so she's going to look at health promotion, identification, early intervention, coordination of care, navigating support systems. Isn't that sometimes really tricky? Like, okay, I see that there's an issue here. Now where do I send this family, you know? Um, and she's particularly going to have a look at those rural and remote areas, which again, you know, in a, in a country where we have some really big states yeah. um, and a lot, of, a lot of miles to travel, it's really important that everybody who needs support gets it. And then uh, Stephen Dunn's with leadership. Yeah, yeah. Bringing conscious and courage and love to leadership. Um, it's, it's a, a really interesting concept, but as you know, Stephen champions um, a good leadership as a fundamental for creating um, a workplace where people's productivity um, improves, where there's fulfillment, where there's a sense of belonging um, and where we thrive. Now, historically, nursing as a culture overall hasn't been fantastic at cultivating you know, a good feel workplace. So it's definitely something um, as nurses, we can help improve by being more aware of these concepts and getting some advice from an absolute expert in the field on what we can do um, to, you know, create some self-awareness, to keep our egos in check, to create psychological safety um, for our nursing colleagues um, and think about how we deliver gratitude to each other. There's going to be some stories of some weird and wonderful toxic workplace but there's also going to be some stories where this stuff works really well and the outcomes are great. Yeah, fantastic, because everyone wants to be happy at work, so why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. absolutely. So infection prevention control in office-based practice. Yeah, so the RACGP and APNA um, actually published the new infection prevention control guidelines not long ago. Um, and so this session is actually presented by some of the technical working group who developed um, those guidelines. And they're going to discuss what's new and what's changed and what's significant in the infection for prevention and control and provide some implementation tips um, for nurses as a awful lot of nurses who are the IPC leads in their organisations these days. And if you're not the lead, you're still contributing. Mm. You still do stuff every day to ensure that you've got good control measures in, in place and stop the spread of infection. Um, so, and there's, or they're also going to cover off what you need to do to meet accreditation standards in this space too. Yeah, fantastic. Then we jump into some more speed presentations. So um, supporting patients to make healthier habits using digital technology, um, moving nurses back into aged care. Really interesting topic, that one. So that'll be fantastic. Um, and that will be Fran uh, speaking about that one. Uh, then we have a piece around um, preventative care in general practice and then burnout. What an important, um, you know, important topic there. Uh, followed by um, some uh, a piece on sleep solutions and tips for non-mental health care nurses in primary healthcare. And then we jump into our final concurrence. So chronic kidney disease. Yeah, so um, a really interesting, um, a really interesting space. The, the government has done, and the health departments have done a fair bit of work in what we can do around identifying chronic kidney, kidney disease early. The problem with chronic kidney disease is you can actually lose um, up to ninety percent of your kidney function before symptoms become apparent. So that's an issue. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things that um, nurses can do if they know about easy, um, smart ways to do early detection, um, management, using practical tools. Um, we're going to hear about some resources to implement the new guidelines and treatment protocols, um, ways that the um, Kidney Health Australia can support um, you to learn about early diagnosis and improving patient care and outcomes. You know, you can actually prolong, um, you know, the, the lifespan of, of a kidney um, with good early intervention. Uh, um, but you can't put that intervention in place if you don't know that kidney disease is there. So that early detection is really important. Yeah, definitely. And then the role of the nurse in high performing primary health care. Yeah. So, you know, um, Australia is great um, at primary healthcare. We have some, um, you know, unbelievable leaders in this country, but we are not blind to what um, other countries are doing overseas. Um, so this presentation is going to draw on the experiences um, of Chris and Jane Bolland um, during their um, study of what's happening in the US and UK. Um, and they're going to give us some, some inside view of some of the really innovative stuff that's happening overseas that we might be able to do here. 
Yeah, fantastic. Um, from learners to leaders, really interesting. Yeah, so this one's being presented by um, a collection of the program managers from APNA's Nursing and Primary Healthcare Program. If you've ever thought about um, being a nurse mentor, for those of you who are experienced um, in, in healthcare, um, or starting a nurse-led clinic or enhancing your chronic disease management, um, these are all the projects that the team are going to discuss in this session. And then my patient has dementia, what do I do next? Good question. Uh, I know, right? Mm. What do you do? You listen to an expert. That's what you do. Um, yeah. yeah, Carolyn is um, an amazing nurse leader in the space of de um, dementia diagnosis and care. Um, you know, when we look at again at those numbers, dementia is actually the leading cause and disability for women in this country. And it's the second leading cause of, uh, of death overall. Um, it'll affect close to 1 million people by 2050. It's not going anywhere. So we want to learn from Carolyn about recognising the red flags, about how to address cognitive impairment with people. Nobody wants to hear that. How are we going to do that in a way that's okay? Mm. Um, understanding what we need to do with the MM. Um, SEs, incorporating um, cognitive impairment screening um, and, and management into our chronic disease management frameworks. Then we jump into our final speed presentation. So one on heart failure. We have a piece on workplace incivility, um, opportunity skin cancer identification. Uh, and then the last one there is Australian Indigenous Health Infonet, um, helping Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders health. And then Finally, we jump into the final plenary, Suzanne. Yay, um, Georgie will be back again and there's going to be prizes. So don't leave before the end because you, if you win a prize and you leave, we draw on it again. Um, so we've got some fantastic giveaways there. But we're also going to hear from um, Professor Karen Strickland. She's the um, Dean of Nursing and Midwifery at um, Edith Cowan University in WA. So we're going to um, you know, hear from her and, and what the academic scene um, is looking like in the medium to, to long-term future for nursing. Um, we'll hear from Karen Booth, the APNA president. And also, I'll let the cat out of the bag, we're going to hear from Greta Westwood. Uh, she's as great as the CEO of the Florence Nightingale Foundation in the UK. Now, she can't be with us this year, but we're going to hear from her on the screen this year because we think she's coming next year, which is going to be just phenomenal. So, yeah, very excited about that. Fantastic. And that brings us to the end. So um, obviously it's going to be fantastic, like lots of lots of education packed in there, which is going to be fantastic. It's going to be a really good, uh, a really good event. And I think you and I have done a great job tonight, Suzanne, because they have no questions at this stage. Um, I know. So, but yeah. Can I tell them about the workbook? Yeah, go for it. Jump in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we always have to think about um, our CPD and recording our reflection and complying with the guidelines of the NMBA and, and ARPA and whatnot. So if you were at one of our roadshow events last year, you'll know, you would have noticed that instead of just a program, we actually had the program built into a workbook. Now we're gonna do the same thing for conference. So you'll have a workbook with all the information about the conference and the program and all the ins and outs that you need to know, but you'll also have space to mark off each session that you attend, write your reflection, it's gonna be all there in one booklet for you to take home. And you know, if you do get that dreadful CPD audit, you've got it all packaged up. We'll also have, um, like we did uh, last year, have some facilities inside the conference app to, to, you know, if you like to record stuff with your thumbs, you know, I'm old school, I'm gonna write it. But you know, if you like doing it on a screen, then you can definitely do that and export it as a PDF as well. So we're definitely thinking about um, your CPD and we just wanna make this work for you and make it easier for you and um, you know, keep all the information in one space. There's also gonna be some QR codes in that book um, to, uh, to for you to be able to access some more information from some of the um, you know the, the organisations that are leading the masterclasses and some of our sponsors and that kind of stuff as well. So yeah, we want want you to walk away with the with the whole package. Yeah, definitely. So second release early bird tickets um, finish uh, on Monday, the 26th of June, which is this Monday coming. So you've got five days to jump in there um, and, um, and jump in and grab that. So do have a couple of questions here. Fantastic. Um, thank you for, for jumping in. Yeah, so Mitch, they, they want to know if um, we're going to be recording the sessions to watch later because they want to come to all of it. I know you feel like you want to clone yourself, right, and just get into everything. 
That's a really good question. So um, those who attended the roadshow last year, they would have known that we recorded all of the sessions. Um, we're working on doing that. We, we haven't confirmed that just yet, but we're working on, on being able to provide that. But um, definitely uh, come along and um, and yeah, we, we, hopefully we can offer that for sure. Then we also have a question from Karen about buying tickets on the day. Yes, you can buy tickets on the day um, if you'd like to, um, but I would highly recommend that you jump in um, earlier than that. Our masterclasses, which you've heard about this, uh, this evening, um, they will fill up. So, you know, they do have limits on those. Um, so please, I, I would highly recommend you, you jump in early um, and, and not wait till the day. But if you do turn up on the day, yes, you can buy tickets. But, um, you know, I'd, if I was you, I'd be um, jumping, uh, jumping on and buying it before the end of the early bird ticket rate um, to save yourself um, a little bit of money uh, there for sure. Yeah, so, look, look, we've made those tickets as, you know, as economical as we possibly, possibly could. Um, but yeah, by leaving it later, you, you're going to get, you know, you're not going to get the, the discount that you can get by jumping in um, being soon. And there's a there's a few different ticket options too, Mitch. Yeah, so, so there's, you, can there, buy... you, can, you can do the, the full three days, you can do the two days, um, so being the Friday and the Saturday, or you could do a single day. So you could do just the Friday or just the Saturday. Um, and yeah, as Suzanne said, we, we've tried to keep the ticket price down as much as possible. Um, so it's actually the cheapest nursing conference out there. Um, so, um, you know, and unfortunately, big venues are quite expensive. So, you know, the Perth Exhibition and Convention Centre, um, uh, you know, catering and all sorts of different things that go into that. So um, we, we definitely have tried to keep down the tickets uh, as much as we can um, and uh, yeah as I said it is the cheapest nursing conference out there so please come along so Karen asking another question here about can you get a ticket for the Thursday and the Friday uh, no you can't so um, unfortunately we can't offer because of the the master classes being so sort of all encompassing um, we can't offer the the Thursday and the Friday um, but you can definitely buy the Friday and the Saturday if that's something um, if you if you'd like to do that for sure so uh, we'll keep rolling along uh, and um, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into our we'll skip past questions we'll jump into a bit of an APNA membership overview so this is a great little piece if you uh, are still if you're currently an APNA member and want to you know re-familiarise yourself with the different benefits that you have uh, or if you're thinking about becoming an APNA member it gives you a bit of an overview of what we of what we do and what membership um, sort of provides. So APNA membership equips nurses to succeed in their roles by giving them access to and we basically talk about membership in what we call the four buckets. So up-to-date education and resources, the latest industry news and guidelines, communities expert advice uh, and support and finally insurance advocacy and perks. So I'll go through each one of those different buckets so we have a fantastic suite of different education. Um, so online learning, we have Nursing Australia podcast, which is the most uh, popular nursing podcast in the country. Thank you very much. Uh, and we have uh, educational events, uh, including uh, our Festival of Nursing. And we also have some nurse know-how videos, which is sort of um, that, that important sort of one-on-one -on -one you know, information sharing. So tips and tricks from different other nurses around uh, then we jump into the latest interesting news and guidelines. So the Connect newsletter, which comes out every Monday, uh, and you will, uh, you know, you get the member version of that. So you get the premium version of that um, that edition. So you get all the content, uh, and that is segmented. So uh, in our system, if you set yourself up as an aged care nurse, you see see more aged care content. If you set yourself up as you know living in New South Wales, you see content relevant to New South Wales. So please make sure once, uh, you know, once you're in this, in our system that you are, uh, there are those sort of data points that we can make sure that you we sort of get through all the guff and make sure that you get exactly what you need. So then there's Primary Times, which comes out uh, once every six months. And then the latest edition has just landed in uh, mailboxes this week. Uh, there's also some breaking primary healthcare new news and alerts. And there's also the Knowledge Hub on the website for you to search and have a bit of a look at. Uh, then we jump into communities, expert advice and support. So we've got our nurse support line, which is staffed by expert nurses uh, and is open um, daylight hours, Monday to Friday. So um, please jump on and, and use that service. It's a fantastic service. Suzanne is on there uh, occasionally. Uh, and then we've got a 
a few other great nurses, Joe, Prue, and, um, and Andrea on there as well. We run nurse talk events during the year, so you can come and meet nurses uh, in your local area um, and network with them and, and come and learn as well. So they're education events as well with, a, with an element of networking and, and sort of socialising in there as well. And then we run a couple of different online communities, sort of communities of practice for you to, to be a part of as well. And then finally, insurance advocacy and perks. So there's the CPD portal on uh, the APNA website, which allows you to log uh, the, your CPD. There's the career and education framework and tools that helps you map um, your career uh, and education and gives you sort of areas of strengths and areas to grow. There's our advocacy team who run some fantastic um, campaigns uh, during the year. There's our advisory nurse panel uh, that you can come and you can represent your profession, but then also um, if you'd like to evaluate nurse education um, that is part of the advisory nurse panel as well so please jump on and um, and nominate yourself for the panel um, there is access to professional indemnity insurance so that is an add-on so you can um, buy really highly discounted professional indemnity insurance um, as part of uh, you know as part of the APNA there's our nurse awards so win a nominate or win win a, uh, a nurse of the year award there's some rewards and discounts and then there's finally our negotiation guide which gives you some really great tips um, to negotiate on all different things, including um, negotiating pay rises as well. So uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take those now. But if not, um, we might uh, finish up for this evening. Um, fantastic, Suzanne. I think um, really looking there forward was, to the festival there was of one in Yeah, we are. There was one in the chat, just someone, um, and I've lost it on my screen, just someone asking about, um, I think, about APNA's support for credential mental health nurses. Look, it's a really specialised field. If you're already a credential mental health, um, that's we don't play in that as specific education space. Um, we do provide lots of education in the mental health space for, for generalist nurses. However, um, through some of the um, APNAS programs, um, like transition to practice and like building nurse clinics and, um, and chronic disease management, there is, um, there is a focus around uh, um, the mental health. Um, and there's lots of ways that you can you know, contribute to that, um, to learn from those, those programs. Um, the other thing is, is that all of the, the other membership benefits you know, apply. As a member, you actually have unlimited support, uh, support through the nurse support line. That means you can call or email as many times as you like. We do accept calls and emails from non-members, but only once. We give them, you know, we give them one. Um, but it's it's a member benefit, and it's there for you. Um, it is. It, it, the other thing that, that APNA does do though in, in that mental health space and in some of the other niche areas of nursing is that we endorse CPD by other providers. So expert um, areas of, of healthcare education will ask APNA to endorse their education. Um, that's actually, yeah, around more of that subject matter expertise stuff. Some of the stuff that's, yeah, really nuanced um, and mental health, credential mental health nursing certainly is that. Um, so we are involved um, from, from that perspective. And so we have one of our education web pages where all of the endorsed education sits um, that you can point to a, as well. So, you know, you can have a look at that um, and I encourage you to jump on the website and have a play with all of that stuff and have a look through. Um, and if, you still have questions, then hey, use that one complimentary phone call to the nurse support line and ask them and we will help you with whatever we can. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Suzanne. I'm really looking forward to the Festival of Nursing next month in Perth. Um, friendly reminder, the uh, the early bird tickets end on Monday the 26th, so Monday coming, so please jump on and grab your tickets and we're really looking, looking forward to bringing so much fantastic education um, to you in Perth next month. So Looking forward to seeing you uh, in five or six weeks now and um, have a good evening. Yeah, we'll have a drink at the festival party. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.